All right, so we talked about cosine inverse canceling cosine somewhere around here. Maybe we didn't talk about that. I thought we did. Here we go. Cancellation properties. So I'll do an easy problem and then I'll do a not easy problem. So we're going to use these properties right here. Basically, cosine cancels cosine inverse in either order. But we have to be a little bit careful about our, uh, where our x values come from. So this is going to cancel out right to one third. And the reason is because one third is in the domain of cos inverse of x, which is negative one to one. So that one third is between negative one and one. So that's no problem. That's the reason I cancel out. So what is wrong with 2 as an input for cos inverse? Not in the domain. So 2 right here, 2 is not in the domain. So it's too big. So this is uh, undefined, I guess we'd call it. Or does not, does not exist. That's a better term. So it does not exist. So now I'm going to compose them in the other order. So our restricted domain of cosine was 0 to pi. So pi over 7 is definitely between 0 and pi. So this is going to cancel out to just be pi over 7. So as long as your input angle is between 0 and pi, you get to just cancel them out. So now we'll go for a tricky problem. So one thing I can tell you this is not going to be is negative pi over 7. Because pi over se negative pi over 7 is not between 0 and pi. So these two functions, cos inverse and cosine, cancel when the input is in the domain of cos x. You always look at the function eating first and look at that one's domain. All right, unfortunately, negative pi over 7 is not in uh, domain cosine, which is 0 to pi. So, what we're going to do is find a theta that is between 0 and pi such that. cos theta equals cos negative pi over 7. So first of all, have we dealt at all with any pi's over 7? No. no. We have pi over 6. That's about the closest that we know. So I don't know what x value uh, this cosine would, would have. However, I don't need to know what x value it has. I just need to know another angle that's in either quadrant 1 or 2. That has the same cosine value. So let's look at cos of negative pi over 7. So negative pi over 7 is a small angle. It's going to be somewhere around here. So there's negative pi over 7. It's rotating clockwise. 
Of course, what we were paying attention to is the x coordinate. That's what cosine of negative pi over 7 is. It's the x coordinate. So, what angle has a point on the unit circle with the same x coordinate as negative pi over 7? So, let's go po positive pi over 7. So, we'll look up above in quadrant 1. We're just taking the same x value and going across the x axis. And we have positive pi over 7. So what this means is cos pi over 7 equals cos negative pi over 7. Sometimes you can use the uh, fact that cosine is even to get, these, uh, to get these. But I recommend, instead of just relying on even the even property of cosine, that you actually draw your unit circle out and see where uh, negative pi over 7 is and then think about what angle in the proper quadrant has the same trig value. All right, so now that we know cos pi over 7 equals cos negative pi over 7, what I'm going to do is make a swap up here. So our original, I'm going to swap out negative pi over 7 for positive pi over 7. The only reason I can do it is because what I underlined, those two have the same value. We had that written down below. So from this fact, those two are the same. So I made a substitution off of to something else that's equal. Do cosine inverse and cosine cancel now? They do because our pi over 7 is between 0 and pi. So we get to cancel them out and just get positive pi over 7. This is one of the trickier types of questions I can ask you in pre-calculus class. So we'll do one more problem very similar to this. Oh, what am I? Wait, we want cos, cos inverse of cosine. There we go. All right, so find cos inverse of cosine of 17 pi over 5. So we're going to do the same first steps here. First thing, notice 17 pi over 5 is not between 0 and pi. So the cosines are not going to cancel each other out right away. We're going to have to find another angle that has the same cosine value. So first, we need a theta between 0 and pi, such that cos theta equals cos 17 pi over 5. So 17 pi over 5. Let's count in pi over 5. So we got 5 pi over 5, 10 pi over 5, 15 pi over 5. So this is going to do one full lap and then some more. So figure out where this stops on the second rotation. And then what angle has the same cosine value? So you're thinking about the x coordinate. <coughs> So do your best to figure out what angle, uh, where 17 pi over 5 is, and then what other angle has the same x-coordinate in the unit circle. <coughs> 
So what quadrant is 17 pi over 5 going to live in? 3. So it's definitely going to be 3. It's close to quadrant 4. So it's going to be somewhere around here in quadrant 3. Now the reason it's in quadrant 3 and not 4, we're looking and comparing 15 pi over 5 and 20 pi over 5. And if you think about 17 pi over 5, that's 2 fifths of the way around. So if I cut it into 5 pieces, do my best to cut this into 5 pieces. So something like that, that would be 16 pi over 5, 17 pi over 5, 18 pi over 5, 19 pi over 5, and then 20 pi over 5 is already labeled. So I do my best to cut it into five pieces of pizza of the same size. Not including the y-axis is not a slice of pizza, or not one of the slices of pizza. It's just uh, on the graph. All right, so 17 pi over 5 is the angle that we're interested in. So I'm going to uh, ignore all the other ones. I want the x-coordinate of that angle. So it's going to be right there. So visually, I can write down where the other point's going to be. It's going to be right up there. What angle, what's the measure of that angle? How will that angle compare to this angle? Depending on how you measure, they're either the same or they're negatives of each other. So what's the measure of that green angle? And we can measure it this direction. 3 pi over 5. I'm just counting off pi over 5s. There's three of them. So remember, fractions are easy if everything's in fifths. So we're not fraction geniuses, we're just writing everything in fifths and then counting out fifths. So the other angle is 3 pi over 5. So are there any questions about this idea here? This is definitely related to reference angles when we looked at those. It's similar. You're measuring things and uh, comparing different angles. So we got 3 pi over 5. So what that tells us is that cos 3 pi over 5 is equal to cos 17 pi over 5. They have the same x coordinate. So we're going to use that uh, 3 pi over 5 in our original. So cos 17 pi over 5 is the same as cos 3 pi over 5. So am I allowed to cancel cos inverse and cosine now? So I am because 3 pi over 5 is between 0 and pi. So it's in the right range now. So they do cancel out, and we have 3 pi over 5. So we will be doing a very similar problem when we get to sine inverse, which is what we're doing next. So we're going to have a one more problem that's going to be similar to this one. So we're going to look at the sine function next. So this will be inverse sine. So we're going to begin with the graph of sine x. So draw your best sine x graph out here. And go out to 2 pi. Test yourself. You're going to need to know the graph of sine, cosine, and the other four trig functions tomorrow. 
just like we did for cosine, we're going to erase a bunch of the sine graph until we have a one-to-one -one function. So I'll start erasing. Now if you are writing a pen, you can just cross out what I erase. So <clears throat> I can go to the right for a little while. What x value, when I pass which x value, will I not be one-to-one -one anymore? I over two. So as soon as I start to go downhill, then we're not going to be one to one anymore. So we're going to get rid of all that part of the graph. So I'm going to fill in that point there. Now there's some more of the sine graph that's also one to one. So I'm going to draw another period going to the left. So there's another period of sine. We definitely can't go the entire period without failing one to one. How far can I go to the left and still be one to one? Negative pi over two. So we go negative pi over two until I start going uphill, and then we'll fail one to one again. So we got to stop there. So I'm going to eliminate the rest past it. So our restricted domain is negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And of course, this is a sine x domain. And we can write the sine x range. So what is the range of this restricted function? I haven't written the y values on. What y values do we go between? Negative 1 to 1. So just like the cosine function in this sense. So the domain of sine is equal to the range of sine inverse. And the original range is the new domain of sine inverse. So domain and range are going to swap for the inverse function. So we can graph the inverse function out. We're going to pay attention to those three points. So I'll label their coordinates up above, negative pi over 2, comma, negative 1, 0, 0, and last up, pi over 2, 1. So we're going to take the xy coordinates now and flip them around, just like we did before. So we're going to graph the inverse function here. 0, 0 is easy because it flips around to 0, 0. Now, if we do the positive point first, that pi over 2, 1 is going to become 1 pi over 2. So go over 1, go up pi over 2. We have a point there. And the other point is negative 1, negative pi over 2. The actual curve of the graph, if we think about the line y equals x, we're going to reflect it across this line here. So that means the curve that looked like it was curving up before is now going to bend slightly downwards. So it's going to have a downward type of curve like that. And then the other curve is going to bend the other direction like that. So there's the graph of sine inverse. You can see the range and the domain right off the graph of sine inverse. And it's right, uh, the range is negative. Uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, those are the y values there. And domain is similar, it's all the x values, negative 1 to 1, right there. So I want to be consistent, so I'll go in the same order I went last time. 
hopefully. Inverse. Domain and range. All right, so we're going to write cancellation properties now. So remember the inside function is the one that uh, has to eat first, so it's the more important domain here. So on our first cancellation, sign is eating first, and we said the sign domain was restricted to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's the first interval. The second cancellation happens when x is in the domain of sine inverse. So that's going to be the second one, which is negative 1 to positive 1. So we're ready for some examples now. So our first example. Find sine inverse of negative 1 over square root 2. So <clears throat> sine inverse is supposed to eat sides and give you angles. So I'm looking for an angle here. This one's supposed to eat sides and give you angles. So just like before, I'm looking for an angle, so I'm going to let theta equals sine inverse negative 1 over square root 2, and then bring the sine function to the other side. <coughs> we also have to be careful and be sure that theta is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So what theta value, what angle has a sine of negative 1 over square root 2? So we have to be in quadrant 4 because we're negative. And what angle in quadrant 4 has this y value? Negative pi over 4. So it's the halfway point in quadrant 4. So there's negative pi over 4, and it has. If I write the x and y value, the x value is 1 over square root 2. The y value, the one that we care about, is negative 1 over square root 2. So that y value is the reason we picked this angle. So <clears throat> theta equals uh, negative pi over 4. Because sine negative pi over 4 equals negative 1 over square root 2. So our angle is just negative pi over 4. So I could definitely ask you inverse trig question. They're usually a little bit more straightforward and faster than uh, a cancellation question because you just know the angle or you don't know the angle. Uh, you can rewrite it, of course, and you do have to be a little careful about where your angle comes from. Now, some people find the domain hard to remember. One nice trick is it's always quadrant one, and the only question is, is it quadrant one and two, or is it quadrant one and four? And you just have to decide which of those two it is. So it's either quadrant one and two, or one and four. Never quadrant three. So never look in quadrant three for the inverse, uh, the inverse trig functions. Now for the sine function, how do I know sine is quadrant 
uh, 1 and 4. The reason is sine's y values. So think about y values are not going to repeat in quadrant 1 and 4. If you think about sine and 1 and 2, sine, the y values definitely repeat in quadrant 2. So that's why quadrant 2 is not in the domain of sine inverse. Or not in the domain of the sine, the restricted domain of sine. <coughs> So we'll do some cancellation examples now. Let's do negative 33 pi over 7. So that's definitely not between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So this is not going to equal negative 33 pi over 7, for sure. So we're going to need a theta. We need a theta between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, such that sine theta equals sine negative 33 pi over 7. So negative 33 pi over 7, that's at least two rotations right there, or two negative rotations. So I'm going to use the periodic property to start taking out rotations. And what's a period of sine? So period of sine is 2 pi. Hopefully you remember that from graphing. That's the regular period unless there's a, a horizontal stretch or compression. So we're going to use this property. That if basically I can add as many 2 pi as I want. I can also take away as many 2 pi as I want. So let's go ahead and take out one rotation. So I'm going to add in 2 pi. The reason I'm adding 2 pi and not subtracting, if I subtracted 2 pi, I would get a larger negative angle. What I want to do is get my angle as close to 0 as possible. So I'm adding 2 pi. I can actually add 4 pi if I want to, because there's going to be more than one angle. But we'll do that next. So adding 2 pi, that is 14 pi over 7. Oh, somebody's better at subtraction than I am. Is that negative 19? Hopefully. Seems right. So the reason I'm, oh, not cosine. Sine negative 19 pi over 7 is equal to sine of negative 33 pi over 7. So that's just from the periodic property. Now, 19 over 7, negative 19 over 7 is not too much better. Let's go ahead and unspin another rotation out of there. So it's negative 19 plus 14, which is negative 5 pi over 7. That means negative sine negative 5 pi over 7 is equal to the original sine negative 33 pi over 7. And the only question is, is negative 5 pi over 7 good enough? Meaning, is it going to land inside that interval? It's tricky. Why is it tricky? Yep, because so the, for the exact reason fractions suck, because they don't have the same denominator. And their denominators aren't even similar. It's kind of hard to compare them. Uh, what would be a common denominator? <laughs> 
14. So let's write everything out in 14 So this is negative 7 pi over 14 positive 7 pi over 14. That's probably good enough to say whether or not, so it's now negative 5 pi over 7 in between there. Nope, it would be negative 10 pi over 14. So still not good enough. However, negative 5 pi over 7 is good enough to graph. It doesn't have a full rotation in it. So let's do our best shot at graphing it on the unit circle. So. I just wanted to go until there was not a full rotation. All right, negative 5 pi over 7. So if we count in sevenths, a half negative rotation is negative 7 pi over 7. And this should help me out to figure out where negative 5 pi over 7 is. You don't have to be super exact here. It's definitely in quadrant 3, though. So it's going to be past quadrant 4 into quadrant 3. And that's negative 5 pi over 7. I want to label it over here. <clears throat> All the, This question is about the sine functions. So am I thinking about x or y coordinates? So think about y coordinates. So before with cosine, we were uh, thinking about x coordinates. With sine, we're thinking about y coordinates. So here's the y coordinate that we're working with. If you draw better circles, this will visually look better than what I'm drawing here. So the other corresponding y coordinate would be right there. And now the question is, what angle is that going to be? So do you remember reference angles? So there's basically 2 pi over 7 is this green angle. It's the same as the blue angle, but my circle's really poorly drawn, so they don't look the same size. So the blue and the green have the same measure. We just want to make sure we're spinning the right way, so this is negative 2 pi over 7 right there. So that's not, I didn't explicitly explain why those two sine values are equal. I'm just using intuition here. So we're basically counting out, there's two pi over sevens right here, thinking about reference angles, and then there's, I need two pi over sevens on the other side. So are there any questions about that equality right there? All right, the whole reason we did this, because this is also equal to sine, somewhere up here, negative 33 pi over 7. And negative 2 pi over 7, finally, is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So we finally found an angle that is in, properly in quadrant 4. So we can rewrite our original problem. Cos inverse of cos negative 33 pi over 7. And we're replacing cos 33 pi, negative 33 pi over 7. Whoa. This is a sign problem. And now I can finally cancel my sine inverse of sine. And we get negative 2 pi over 7. 
That's the only example I'm, gonna, I'm going to do for sine, uh, sine inverse of sine. It works really similar to the cosine uh, one. So I don't want to spend time doing really similar stuff. So we're going to move over to the tangent inverse now. So draw your best graph of tangent. Draw one period of the tangent function, the one period that you normally draw. period you draw is the one I have on the board, 0 to pi. You're just always doing whatever uh, the trig function you're remembering, you're always doing a period starting at 0 and either going to 2 pi or 1 pi, depending on which function you're drawing. So is this function 1 to 1 in its period? No. It's super close though. If I threw out one point, if I just got rid of this point right here, I'd have a 1 to 1 function. However, the drawback is I have two separate pieces, or a disconnected graph. So what I'm going to do, instead of just taking out that one point, I'm going to draw another period on the left. So I'm going to draw one more period going to the left. Now there should be a pretty obvious piece of the graph that we're going to take that is one to one. So we're going to take that connected piece right in the middle. So go ahead and erase the outside parts. Unlike the other functions, there's a very obvious part of this graph we should take, and it's that middle piece right there. That middle piece is definitely one to one. So our restricted domain is going to be negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Do I get to include the endpoints? Is this open interval or closed interval? Open. It's going to be open because we don't want to use the x values that have asymptotes. So this is the only restricted domain that's open. The other ones are all closed. And what is the range of tangent? Is there a smallest number? Nope. So negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, we're ready to invert the function. So we can reflect across the line y equals x right there. So we're going to redraw this graph, the reflected version. So 0, 0, that's a nice point. stays where it is. It's not going anywhere. I did not really label any other points on this tangent graph to reflect their coordinates across. What happens to this vertical line when I reflect? turns horizontal. Another way to see that algebraically, just think x is going to change to y. So it becomes the line y equals pi over 2. That's another way to see it algebraically. So we have a horizontal asymptote y equals pi over 2. The other line, vertical line, vertical asymptote turns into a horizontal asymptote y equals negative pi over 2. And now if you have some uh, good artistic skills, you can flip the curves over. If not, you can just copy off my mediocre artistic skills. So the graph's going to look like this. I don't have room to write the domain and range up above, so I'll write them down here. Domain.
and range of tangent inverse. All right, what is the domain of tangent inverse? Yep, everything. So negative infinity, positive infinity. You also can look up above. That is the original range of tangent. And then the new range of tangent inverse is the original domain of tangent. Minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, open interval. And we're ready for the cancellation properties. All right, cancellation properties. The inside function has to eat first. So let's think about the first one. X has to be in the domain of tangent, which we said was negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And the next cancellation property, X has to be in the domain of tangent inverse. Good news is domain of tangent inverse is all real numbers. So the second one, you don't really have to worry much about x being outside that uh, domain. So our first example, Find tangent inverse of negative 1. So just like all the inverse trig functions, they're going to input sides and output angles. So let theta equal tan inverse negative 1. And then we're going to move the tangent inverse function over. That's the same as tangent theta equals negative 1. But we need the restriction that theta is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So how do we know what quadrant we're in? Right away, I can only use quadrant two, uh, 4 and 1. Are we in 4 or 1? So we have to be in 4. How do we know that we're in quadrant 4, not quadrant 1? Because it's negative. So tangent is negative in 4 and 2. However, just given the restricted domain, we're not using, we're not going to be using 2. We're going to be using 1 and 4. So 2's out, 4's in. What angle in quadrant 4? What angle theta has a tangent value of negative 1? Negative pi over 4. So this just comes from knowing your values of your unit circle. So tan negative pi over 4 equals negative 1. And that is the theta that we are looking for up here. So that's we just figured out this theta, which is negative pi over 4.